Have you ever had somebody ask you about your honey? Maybe they bought some honey from you and then after five or six months, they come back to you and say, hey, your honey went bad. What is all this? It looks like it's spoiled. I want my money back because your honey went bad. What they're experiencing is real beekeeper honey. It hasn't been processed, it hasn't been pasteurized, hasn't been ultra filtered or anything. And so as a result of that, honey under the right conditions will what we call crystallize. Honey is a super saturated liquid. It actually has glucose and fructose and, and water. And after sometimes under the right condition with the right catalyst, honey can actually crystallize like we see here. And the sugar begins to crystallize. The glucose begins looking for some place to grab a hold of and it will form a crystal. Once these crystals start under the right conditions, right temperatures and all, they just spread pretty rapidly. In fact, in this jar here, you can see the liquid, the water has separated at the top from the more sugar that has begun to crystallize all the way up through this jar. Now, it's interesting though, because a lot of people think it's ruined, it's spoiled, I shouldn't eat it, crystallized honey is gross. That's not true at all. It just means that you bought real honey from a real beekeeper and that honey does what honey naturally does in the right conditions or especially in this case, over a long period of time. Now, is it edible? Is it bad for you? No, it's not because honey doesn't allow bacteria to grow. It has really, it's a very acidic value to it that it doesn't allow the bacteria to spread or grow. And so it remains like this edible forever. Some people say it's the only food that never spoils. So in this case, it's just harder. Instead of being liquid like you see here, it's just simply crystallized. So it's perfectly fine. Now, do I like crystallized honey? I actually love it because uh, I can actually spread it on my toes. It, it can melt down in my coffee really well. Now, what do you do if you get a jar that's crystallized? Most people suggest that you just take a double boiler on your stove in a glass jar like this and heat it up. You don't want to overheat it, but you heat it up to melt it, melt the crystals. How do the big stores actually keep honey on the shelf from crystallizing like this? They have to because most people that go to the store to buy honey, they don't realize that real good honey will crystallize and they see this and think, yuck, it went bad. So they'll not be able to sell their honey, so they have to require that their honey never crystallizes on the shelf. That way they can keep it on the shelf a long time and keep selling it. And the way you do that is you ultra filter any kind of particles from your honey or pasteurize your honey, then it is impossible for it, virtually impossible at that time, for it to ever crystallize because it's been so purified. But most of us feel that if you do all of that to honey, that you lose a lot of its natural flavors. And sometimes we feel you might even lose some of the natural properties that we enjoy uh, in honey. Now let's take a look at this jar and see, I can, we can look at it up close. It's even been around for so long that some of the honey has crystallized on the lid. And you can see the liquid here, how much this liquid at the top has separated out uh, from the hard crystals below it. I'm going to taste this. Uh, this will have a different flavor to it, but I just want to see what it tastes like. Yeah, it tastes like honey. Very good, actually. But let's see if we can get down there to where these crystals are, and I can show you the crystals. Yeah, as you can see here, you see more of the harder crystal. And these crystals that are formed here are gonna be a little bit thicker than what we normally would find in what's called creamed honey. Let me see what these crystals feel like. Yeah. Mm, these crystals, a lot, a lot more grainier. They're almost like sugar. They're harder. You can feel them in your mouth, on your tongue. But I wanna talk about uh, creamed honey. Cream honey is made the same way as honey naturally crystallizes. All we do, and I think I've made some videos on how to make cream honey, but I've made a ton of it. And so what you do is you just take some already creamed honey that you can buy somewhere, or you can buy some starter powder sometimes. But normally most of us take some cream honey and you take a teaspoon of it and you add it to liquid honey. And then you put that jar, that container in the right environment, uh, right around 55, 57 degrees Fahrenheit 
and leave it there for a few weeks. And then these crystals begin to multiply throughout all of the liquid honey. But the clue here is that you have to start with the right kind of crystals. And that means these crystals that you make cream honey with are very small. And so now when you put them on your tongue and taste them, fill them in your mouth, it's very smooth. That's why a lot of people think creamed honey, it looks so smooth that it, it doesn't have the, the harsh kind of where you can feel those crystals. And people think, oh, they must have added butter. It feels creamy. No, we've just added really small crystals and those crystals replicate in the same size that they are. And in this case, they're replicating in a larger size so you can feel it more. But I, you know, most of us that love honey, we really love crystallized honey. I've got a lot more to share with you in the video today. I'm gonna to talk to you about what the measurements are. Some of you are dying for these measurements. You keep telling me you want the measurements. I showed you in a previous video how to make these uh, little five frame nuke boxes, but we'll go through the measurements. I got my tape measure here, but I wanna talk more about some honey. Look at this honey here. Now this honey is interesting because it says uh, honey blend. Picked it up, I don't know where I got this actually, but somebody gave it to me, I think. But it says a honey blend. And as I read the ingredients of this honey, look what the ingredients say. Wow, it doesn't say what most jars of honey say. It doesn't say pure honey. <laughs> and so this is a blend. It does have the word honey in it, but it's the last ingredient. So that means all the other ingredients, the other sugars, is what's the corn syrup, whatever. That's the predominant uh, sugar in this. But I wanna taste it to see if it tastes like honey. I don't feel like eating very much of this. <laughs> I'm just gonna taste it because I don't like the ingredients. All right. In my opinion, it has no flavor of honey at all. It does taste like corn syrup. Um, here is crystallized honey. Um, bought this somewhere. I buy a lot of honey just to test and sample it. But this says orange blossom honey. And I'm a big fan of orange blossom honey. And I wanna see if this tastes like orange blossom. Um, mm, mm. Orange blossom I have found from orange trees. It doesn't taste like oranges, by the way. It tastes like the flowers smell on an orange tree. But I wanna taste this to see if it does taste like orange blossom. Um, it is getting thicker and it has crystallized a little bit, I can see in places. But sometimes even um, this orange blossom honey loses its real strong flavor after it's sat around for a while. When you first harvest it, oh gosh, it's so good. It's even darker than most orange blossom. Here we go. It's from Florida, it says. Mm, oh yeah, yep. You can blindfold me. And I could say orange blossom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. One more thing I want to show you before we get into uh, what size this nuke is. This is a tincture made from propolis. Take a look at this. Uh, somebody sent this to me. I appreciate the gift. Um, it's interesting. I've made tinctures from propolis before. In my last video before this one, I actually showed you propolis, propolis that we got out of a hive and uh, I love playing with it. And what I did one time, I got a whole bunch of propolis and I made big, I just worked it into big balls and I put them in alcohol and made a tincture out of it. And that's what this is here. Let's see if it smells like, mmm, it smells like vodka. <laughs> it smells more like alcohol with a little bit of propolis in it. <laughs> but you can see, if you look closely, that the color, it has that darker uh, propolis color to it. And a lot of people swear by this. You can use it in different applications. I'm not gonna say uh, what applications you, could, you can use it in because I'm not gonna be responsible to give out any medical advice. You do your own research. But a lot of country, other countries, a lot of people here in the US swear by this and uh, they use it for a lot of different purposes. Now, I wanna give you the measurements. Here's a book that Sherry and I wrote, by the way. If you're interested in this book, uh, step on to our website, honeybeesonline.com, visit our website, and we'll autograph a copy when you purchase one. Sherry and I wrote this book. She wrote half and I wrote the other half, and it might be the right time of the year for you to give that as a gift or use it for yourself. Also, but right before we open this box up and do some measurements, and uh, I'll tell you what video I made so you can see how to make this yourself. 
please subscribe to my videos. Give me a thumbs up. You guys are so great. It does help me out a lot. It helps my videos get promoted around when you subscribe and when you give me a thumbs up. So would you take a moment right now down at the bottom here, subscribe, click on the bell, give me a thumbs up. Now let's talk about the measurements here. Uh, I know a lot of you are watching this video for the first time and you're going, Gosh, I love that little five frame nucleus. How did you make it? I want to I want to make me one. What's that top all about? What is this yellow entrance all about? How did you do it? How did you do it? A lot of you don't realize that I all the videos that I make, they're still there. I have an inventory, I think of over 600 videos, and this is one of them. I think I made it within the last 30 days, a video on how I, I just stood there with you, cut the pieces and built it right in front of you. So you can watch that video. Go back, look at my channel, and find, uh, find this video. So this is made out of half inch plywood. And as you can see, uh, the measurements of this don't have to be really exact. It's gonna be a five framer, so this is nine inches wide. We always use a measurement for 10 inches for this piece here. So from that floor there up is exactly 10 inches. So this piece here, everybody's wanting these measurements. The front piece is nine by 10. That means that this side piece, since it goes uh, inside of the front like this, it's still gonna be 10 inches this way. See what I mean? Everything is 10 inches high. Think of that, the back piece, 10 inches high. In fact, the back piece here is same as the front, 10 by nine. 10 inches tall, nine wide. <laughs> All right, so now let's measure this piece here. These are the uh, pieces that go along the inside and they're 19 and a quarter. So about 19 and a quarter inches is what you're looking for here. And why we need that measurement to be right is because we want the frames to fit in here. So we want the, that space to be about 19 and a quarter inches. That way it allows our frames of, on a deep frame or a super frame to hang right in here. And this piece here is, let me give you the measurements. A lot of you are asking me about this piece here. As you can see, I dropped it down uh, so my frame would sit in there nicely. So let me give you the measurements on those inside pieces. Uh, this measurement is nine and a half from the floor up to the top here, that's gonna be the bottom board down here that it's gonna rest inside of. So I actually build the box first and then I add this piece. So it's gonna sit there at nine and a half tall. That means there's a half inch right here for the frames, frames to hang on. And this piece that fits inside of there is exactly seven and three quarters. So it's seven and three quarters wide and it's gonna be nine and a half here. Same on the piece up here, they're, they're both identical. And then the bottom piece, um, you can just easily figure out the math now because this has got to be nine inches. And if you do the math this way, of course, it's gonna be the size of the box. Now I made mine accidentally a little bit longer, which worked out kind of cool because the bottom piece is a little bit too long here and it sticks out a little bit. But if you just measure the box, the overall width of the box, that's what is gonna be your bottom piece. And in my case here, I mean, you can put the bottom on last, but it looks like mine is about 20 and a quarter uh, from these two pieces, 20 and a quarter. And the width again, say it with me, nine inches, <laughs> right? All right, nine inches and nine inches, nine inch. I just think five frame boxes should be nine inches is, is all there is to it. I think I gave you all the measurements. I know a lot of you are wanting to make your own. Watch this video, I'll, maybe I'll leave the video at the end after I'm done talking and sharing. I'll leave the video where I made this and you guys can make your own. Now I make these, I bend these on my metal bender. This is just pieces of aluminum. I get them in big, huge rolls and I've got a cutter and a bender, and I just put these little bends at a slight angle like this, and that way I can, you know, you can make a wooden lid. I, you probably should, but for me, I like to get in there fast, and I just put a little metal lid on there. Keeps the rain out. It allows me to take it on and off pretty fast. I just was thinking one day, how can I make an easy top? And that worked for me. <laughs> and it's a, the trick of this, and the fun part of this is, if you, if you cut it just right and bend it just right, then it has like a spring tension. You see how it holds itself in there? It, you, you have to kind of work it and snap it down. The wind doesn't blow it off because both pieces are kind of biting into the wood, holding the tension across that five frame nucleus like that. 
Well, I'll put a brick on anyway. Now, I hope you're free tomorrow on Sunday. I'm filming this on Saturday, but if you're free tomorrow, I'm gonna have coffee time. If you're watching these videos out of sequence sometime later, uh, it'll be the video that I make after I made this one. Gonna have coffee time with you guys. Got a fun conversation with you. But I want you to watch the video on how I make this because it's a lot of fun using these. And this little door here, I just buy them from B stores. A lot of people sell these, a lot of places sell these, and it has different configurations. I'll explain it in the video that you can watch right here, how to make your own five frame nucleus that you can use for a lot of purposes in queen rearing or just having a spare queen on hand or just wanting a little hive, five frame hive to play with. I'll see you in this video.